What is going on world? I am the Hungarian experiment and recently high fat, low carb diets as well as ketones have been a major discussion in the world partly because of this. The prognosis was very bad. The brain tumor was the size of a baseball. 13 year old Adam Sorensen's survival was measured in months. He quickly had surgery to remove it followed by radiation. But with this aggressive cancer likely to return, his parents did their own research and added this. It's called the ketogenic diet. When you feel pretty helpless as a parent, you're not doing anything for your kid. You're waiting for the cancer to come back. And so that's when I started thinking, well, what can I control? What can I do? And I started looking into uh, diet. It's very high in fats, eggs, cheese, meats, with virtually no sugars or carbohydrates. This diet forces the liver to produce a fuel called ketones that provides energy for the body, but it eliminates glucose in the blood, and that's what cancer cells use to grow and spread. Without it, the theory goes, those cancer cells die. It's worked in some animal studies, so Adam's parents hired a dietitian to make a food plan with Adam on board. His most recent brain scan in March showed Adam remains cancer-free two and a half years later. This researcher who's been tracking Adam's case is intrigued and cautious. While, you know, the anecdotal evidence is very compelling, obviously we need more rigorous and controlled studies to determine whether diet can be an effective option for patients with various forms of cancer. In fact, researchers in Phoenix hope to put some 80 brain cancer patients on this ketogenic diet during their chemo and radiation and track their recovery. But getting funding for this alternative approach is a challenge. So to summarize, following the removal of a massive brain tumor, the parents of a 13 year old boy decided to manipulate their child's diet to that of one consisting of higher fats and lower carbohydrates. Two and a half years after continuing this diet, despite the fact that this type of cancer reoccurs typically after about 18 months, his most recent MRI scans reveal no return of the tumor. Now, this is absolutely amazing. And because of this, I've been getting many questions regarding high fat, low carb diets and their effects on the human body. So I thought I'd create this video to clear a few things up and discuss a few points from that CTV clip. This diet forces the liver to produce a fuel called ketones that provides energy for the body, but it eliminates glucose in the blood, and that's what cancer cells use to grow and spread. Without it, the theory goes, those cancer cells die. Now, this statement can be a little daunting or even scary to someone with little to no understanding of macronutrients, but your body needs carbohydrates just as much as it needs fat. Carbs are your body's first fuel source. You need carbs to recover and grow, but most importantly, you need it to think. Your cognitive abilities heavily rely on carbs to function optimally. Our society always wants to demonize one or the other. But does anyone ever discuss or consider fasting? From watching this video and hearing how this child's parents manipulated his diet in order to have these cancer preventing results, I believe these same effects could be achieved with routine and regular fasting. While you know the anecdotal evidence is very compelling, obviously we need more rigorous and controlled studies to determine whether diet can be an effective option for patients with various forms of cancer. Scientists are now tracking the effects of high fat, low carb diets for its potential to starve out brain tumors and to treat cancer patients. But are they considering that you can deplete carbs from your system from physical activity as well as time rather than just overall intake of carbohydrates? Scientists are now tracking the effects of high fat, low carb diets for its potential to starve out brain tumors and treat cancer patients. But are they considering that you can deplete carbohydrates from your system with physical activity as well as time? rather than just reducing overall intake? If you follow along my journey as the Hungarian experiment, then you know I'm an intermittent faster and I like to relate everything to our ancestral past. I believe it is extremely important to be having periods where your body isn't digesting food and sending this stuff all over your body. 
when our ancestors were out hunting and gathering food and then bringing it back and preparing it, their bodies were in a fasted state for a large portion of the day. Our bodies adapted to tens of thousands of years of this feast and fast type of eating. And our bodies have changed very little in regards to processing macronutrients. I believe that eating six to eight small meals a day is very taxing on the human body. Unless you're depleting the carbohydrates from your system through your physical activity, or you just reduce the overall intake of carbohydrates, you may never be burning fat for fuel. Your body is going to be constantly in this state of needing carbohydrates for its energy sources. So, is a high fat, low carb diet good to prevent cancer from growing in the human body? Personally, I don't believe it's the effect of the diet, but the effect of the depletion of carbohydrates from your system, which is more than possible, and in my opinion, a lot more effective if you are getting a healthy amount of carbs and fats, but you coincide it with routine and regular fasting. Just as having a high carb diet is proving to have health issues, I believe that having a high fat diet will lead to other issues within the human body. It's a balance, people. Not just a balance of fat, carbs, and protein, but a balance of eating and not eating. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. If you like what you saw here, and maybe you found it just a little informative, please go hit that like button, and of course, leave me a comment. If you are new to my journey as the Hungarian experiment, you want to learn a little bit more about fasting, I have a whole playlist on my YouTube channel there. It teaches you how to begin intermittent fasting, all the effects of intermittent fasting, and to give you guys a great idea. It's where I just kind of sit down and I do a little talk time and I discuss my views and my opinions on intermittent fasting. I also have a day-to-day -day playlist where I take you through my full typical situational cheat and even fasted days with intermittent fasting and I try to show you guys how I structure my life on that specific day. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. I am the Hungarian Experiment. Now, this is the thing that bugs me the most and why I am on my journey as the Hungarian Experiment and why I'm trying to get long-term blood and hormonal testing done, not just for myself, but to get it into the minds of other people and to get them thinking on why they should be testing themselves. Why? Because there is no financial incentive there is no drug company that will support this, so getting it funded is difficult. We need our government. We need people out there who are throwing money into these types of things, this type of research, at great things that can test our bodies where we can actually really learn something. Why? Because the only way we're getting scientific studies done and getting funded for things is if there's a corporation and a company out there who's already involved in it and they're putting money because they want to know what their product is doing to your human body or how their product can fix something that's already messed up with you they don't want to help you prevent a disease they want to know how they can treat it and throw a bunch of money at it so they can make a profit in the end and that is what makes me sick as a human being we need to change this we need the general population to be aware of these types of things and to be donating and funding people who are going to get this stuff going on their own. A great person for this is Dr. Rhonda Patrick. If you guys don't know about her, I discussed her in my sauna can build muscle video and I've been following her along on Instagram a lot lately. She's a very smart woman. She's very informed and she can articulate herself very well. I'll link up her Instagram in the description box below, but she is a person that we need to be getting behind and that we need to be understanding the kinds of stuff that she is researching and that she is putting to the test because this is stuff that we all want to know. Yet the proper studies and the proper things aren't getting funded to push this stuff to the test and see if it actually works. But there are people out there that if we could support and fund them, that we could find out this kind of stuff. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. Now, if you have the means, I do have a GoFundMe in the description box below. I'm trying to get my own journey on blood and hormonal testing started here in London, Ontario. And I want to bring other human experiences 
experiments along the journey with me. But this stuff isn't cheap. It's not easy to get this stuff going and to get your body tested. But if enough of us have a demand, if enough of us want this to happen, then the price of things are going to start to go down over time because they're going to start producing it more and more. So if this is something that you guys want to see, if this is something that you guys want to see come into fruition in the world where we are testing human beings and the general population is asking questions and pushing the funding to get this going rather than corporations, then we can really change things in this world.